The tabloids have always kept tabs on Jessica's weight. Does anybody even read tabloids anymore? A picture of me with a circle around my stomach mm. with an arrow pointing to it. The two things that tabloids comprise of are scandals and bodies and sometimes some nice stuff. But no, scandals and bodies only. But really, who's reading them now? I don't think that I've seen one person buy a tabloid magazine from the supermarket. And yet they're stocked up to the brim always. They're always just lined up there at the cashier ready to be purchased, but nobody does. Except me, and it was so embarrassing. The paparazzi boom began in the 2000s, and tabloids would have bidding wars for photos, often pushing the prices into the six figures. 10,000 for a picture of Ben Affleck buying books on poker, and a snap of Britney Spears getting her nails done, $20,000. With these examples, I can only imagine the money they'd make for exclusive stories or crazy, shocking photos of unflattering angles. Okay, the thing about a tabloid story is that not everything in the article has to be true. Nothing has to be true, someone just has to Tabloids will use leading questions to manipulate their sources to get that money quote or they'll just say the quote themselves and the person has to just nod their head and say yeah. They're really grasping at straws in tabloids these days. They basically YouTube clickbaited Kate Middleton. They made Bob Saget's death a murder mystery and they made drama out of Prince Harry going to the Super Bowl with a woman that wasn't Meghan Markle but it's literally his cousin. So in 1977 the National Enquirer had done something that it had never done before. It put a photograph of a dead celebrity in his casket on the front page. That issue sold nearly 7 million copies. Whether you like it or not, it's having an effect on you. But things have changed. Today, the biggest publisher of a tabloid magazine is social media. And it's proving to affect us even more largely than tabloids ever could. Unfortunately, the tabloids of today are crap. Kenzie Ziegler walking with a dragon fruit fan. Vanessa Mardale picking up the newspaper in her pajamas. John Hamm paying for parking. Two pages of celebrities eating cakes. To be fair, that's basically my content. So I bought four magazines, and yeah, the body talk is less aggressive. Although different, body shaming is still huge today. Best and worst vacation beach bodies. I wonder how they get away with that. Because nobody reads them, they can put whatever they want. But that's it, because nobody's reading them, they're cranking up the body stuff again. In this video, as you can see, I bought four tabloids, all issued March and April of 2022. And I'm just gonna see what's up and just let the information completely take over my body. Oh my God, Kim's butt is back. We have a two page spread journalistic thesis of Kim's butt over the years. Regardless of the butt size, she looks amazing. But this article is speculating on her weight loss, where she has a deflated derriere, to her weight gain, where she has a restored rock. What I'm getting from this page is that I need to do a really intense booty workout. Which ageless wonder should I eat like today? Why? She's Australian. McPherson? McPherson? <laughs> Tell McPherson. Or we can do her, but you just have to make sure you keep her name out of your fucking mouth. Okay, Tyler picked Elle McPherson. Very quickly, may I add, you probably have a little bit of a crush. No, a I don't. She's a 50. Stop it, I don't. Right, who do you like though? Just inquiring about that. Who who do you like? Selena Gomez. Oh my god, that. Just breathe a second. Yeah, I like her too. Okay. <laughs> Just breathe a second. Elle McPherson. I don't know who she is, but it says she's 57. She's an ageless wonder. She credits her 14 year alkaline diet. Lots of leafy greens, salads, fruits, vegetables, clean, hormone free proteins like fish and chicken. <laughs> So 
Society has always prioritized thinness and youthfulness, and the media will capitalize off that by giving you the secrets of how you can be just like these celebrities. I bet you remember reading a cover along the lines of the diet that made X celebrity lose 30 pounds in four days. Yeah, things today aren't as blatantly aggressive, but we haven't changed as much as we think. Tabloids are still sneakily doing the exact same thing, repackaged in a different way. Ageless wonder, alkaline diet. I honestly didn't think that an article like this would be in today's tabloids. Why did I think that? I'm not sure. I really shouldn't have any faith in these tabloids, should I? This is an article in In Touch magazine. On the front cover, Jessica's extreme diet, wasting away. I hate those words, wasting away. Oh. Tabloids use the worst words. Like, the most gross words. On the front cover, desperate, in despair. They're all sick of her. Desperate, friends worry, too skinny, bony, haggard, heartbroken and boozing. Basically, this is an article about Jessica Simpson's weight loss and don't worry, I'm not gonna go into detail about it. Even though they have no detail at all because they're just using big words to bait the audience into reading absolute nothingness. When I saw Jessica Simpson being talked about her body in 2022, it brought me back to when I was like 10 years old and I remember seeing Jessica on tabloids again being blasted for her body. <laughs> it's still are happening. It's just crazy, isn't it, with tabloids? It's one or the other. You're either too big and you get bullied for it, or you're so frail and fragile and we're all so worried about you. Are you worried about them? Because I don't think shaming their body was helping. Jessica Simpson has never been left alone. The tabloid page six called her Jumbo Jessica because of these photos, but she's not the only one. We've got Victoria Beckham's aging wrinkly hands, Kelly Clarkson being body shamed while being pregnant, and of course Megan Fox's chode thumbs, that one makes sense. And it's not like these celebrities are immune to the bullying affecting them. Literally in this month's issue of In Touch Weekly, Camilla Cabello got harassed and pictured at the beach, and she even spoke out about it. I am grateful for this body that lets me do what I need to do. We are real women. I just have to read this. This is in a tabloid today, by the way. The 47-year-old has yet to develop much muscle definition and lose his protruding paunch. Imagine taking a picture and being like, oh my God, Leonardo DiCaprio has such a shitty body. Let's put him on this page. But 20 years ago, this was normal talk. Yeah, back then, body positivity was a joke. It didn't exist. The celebrities that you saw and what was accepted was just like flat stomachs, jutting hip bones, size zero. And if you were anything outside of that really small spectrum, you were deemed as overweight or plus size. And the celebrities with the stick-themed bodies were pushed in our face and glamorized or or we fretted over them. And I'm pretty sure I would take a bet, we already know that these celebrities that we saw were not happy. They had mental health problems, extremely disordered eating, drug use. It was not good. Nobody wants that. So it really just proves to me that body ideals aren't influenced by celebrities themselves. It's influenced by the media coverage and the media pushing a certain body type, which may be a certain celebrity's body type, but if they're pushing it so much, it will in turn make them want to go even further and make other celebrities feel like they have to look that certain way. came across the 10 A-list celebrity diets that you can swear by too. I swear I was gonna do Kim Kardashian's diet. I swear, and that's Atkins diet. Um, but something came over me. I didn't want to. Diet culture isn't going anywhere. Of course, we've made huge progress from 20 years ago, but until we figure out what's so incredible about thinness, the media will keep diet culture alive. Take care of yourself. Eat that burger. Find things that you enjoy outside of what your body looks like. Because do you really want your life to be as boring and as meaningless as a 2022 tabloid magazine?